What's up guys, Bob Buskirk here at Think Computers and I'm gonna show you the BIOS here on Asus's Maximus 6 Hero motherboard. This is a brand new Z87 motherboard and Asus has always tried to make things easier in the BIOS. You know, if you're a beginner, going into a BIOS might be a really hard thing to do. So Asus has, of course, added some things to this revision of their BIOS. So we're gonna go over that. Of course, we're gonna go over everything else that's inside the BIOS as well. So the first time you turn on your computer and you go into the BIOS, you should be brought to this screen right here. This is the easy mode. This is for people who really don't wanna dig into their BIOS and everything like that. They just want the easy things, you know, some information, things like that. So the first thing that you're actually gonna see is you're going to see, of course, the date and time, and you're gonna see your BIOS revision number, or version number, which is our, ours is 0607. You're gonna see your CPU and your total memory, as well as, um, you know, the speed and all of that stuff. You can also change, um, you know, to different languages, which is actually pretty cool. You can see your CPU information, so we can see the temperature and voltage of our CPU. Just quick information, and you know, maybe you're testing an overclock and you want to see how, you know, how uh, hot it is before you go into the OS. You can see all of that right here. You can see your DRAM information, what you have installed. And one thing that's really cool that ASUS has added in this revision is you can actually select your um, XMP profiles right here on the easy screen. You don't have to go into the memory settings inside the actual BIOS. You can just set it right there um, to whatever profile you like. Very easy to do. Over here you have your fans. You can see how fast they're going. And then you can also set the different modes, whether it's silent, turbo, or manual. And if you click here, we can see all of our fans that we do have installed um, right there. And again, we can set whatever we would like on those actual fans. Here we have system performance. You can set it to power saving, normal, or ASUS optimal. And you can see over here on the graph kind of what it actually does when you do each one. Here we have boot priority. So you, we have two devices here. Um, this is our actual hard drive and our, this is our USB uh, CD-ROM. But if, say if you had a flash drive and you wanted to you know, boot to that flash drive, it would be you know, right here and you just click it so you don't have to change something in the BIOS. You can easily click it and boot right to that device. Another cool thing here, um, we do have a shortcut menu. Hit F3, um, you know, very, very easy shortcut menu. CPU configuration, monitor, and graphics configuration you can go right to. We have uh, going to advanced mode, which we're gonna show you in just a second. And we also have our SATA information. So maybe you don't know where a SATA, um, you know, what you have installed, or maybe a hard drive's acting weird. You can see if it's actually um, detected. And we do have our solid state drive right there. And of course we do have our boot menu as well um, between those two devices, which is actually the boot priority as well. But if um, you wanted to boot to one of these, you can see everything that is on there and you can load the defaults by hitting F5. But let's go ahead and go into advanced mode and we hit OK. And there we go. Now we're in advanced mode and it loads you to the it's extreme tweaker page, which we'll get into in just one second. But what I want to show you is one of the coolest things that ASUS has added to this revision of the BIOS is the my, Fi my favorites page. And what this is, it's a list of all your favorites. So what you do is say you, there's something that you change all the time that you want, don't want to go through a couple menus to find, right? You want to add it to your favorites page. So all you have to do is um, either hit F4 on your keyboard or right click your mouse on an item and add it, add it to your favorites page. So let's go into Extreme Tweaker real quick. Um, you know, AI Overclock Tuner that you know you can set it to manual or auto or XMP. Um, say we wanna add that to our favorites page. You right click, add to my favorites page and it says success, you hit okay and we go back over and now it's right there. Just that simple um, little menu item is right there that we can go ahead and access very easily from our My Favorites. Now, of course, Extreme Tweaker is everything that you're gonna do with overclocking and all of that fun stuff. So first, it gives you your target um, speeds, which is good because if you're doing an overclock, you may not know what's gonna do what and what speeds. Um, we're overclocked right now. We're running at 4.7 gigahertz. Um, and you can see our target DRAM, cache, um, all of that stuff right here. Now you can change your AI overclock tuner to be auto, manual, or by the XMP. And of course we're running ours as XMP under um, our profile, but you can change your XMP profiles here very easily. Our CPU strap, which of course is newer on the fourth generation processors, you can change that as well, all the way up to 250. 
Um, of course, PLL selection, filter PLL, uh, BCLK frequency, of course, ASUS multi-core enhancement. Go down here. You have your core ratios. Um, so we're syncing on all cores. So what that means is if we set one core, it's gonna be set all of them. If you change this, of course, you can do it per core, which I wouldn't suggest if you're doing a lot of overclocking. You want all your cores to be the same. So we're gonna sync all of our cores. And of course you can change this again, we're running at uh, 4.7, so we'll put in 47 and we hit enter and it's gonna change all those values. You have your minimum and maximum CPU cache ratios. You have your internal PLL over voltage, BCLK frequency to DRAM fre frequency ratio. DRAM frequency, of course, we're running at 1600 megahertz. That was set by our XMP profile. Extreme tweaking, you can enable or disable that. CPU level up, um, you can set that to auto or I think it's just set to auto. Don't believe, yeah, oh, this is this is the overclocking feature, that's what it is. So this is your over auto overclocking feature, it's called CPU level up. Um, so maybe you're not that great at overclocking, you may not know what you may want or something like that, you just don't know that much about overclocking. This is an auto overclocking feature built right into the BIOS called CPU level up. So on our processor, which is the i7-4770K, you can auto overclock all the way up to 4.6 gigahertz. There's also 4.4 as well as 4.2. Um, EPU power saving mode, and then we go down here to more menus. So we have our DRAM timing control, and this is all of the timings for your DRAM, which is a lot of, you know, you have your main timings right here, uh, your primary timings, and you have a secondary, and all of this stuff that you can go in and change if you like. GPU DIMM post, this is exclusive to Republic of Gamers boards. So this will actually show us our installed um, memory, and our installed memory and installed video cards. So in our PCI Express X16 slot number one, we have our NVIDIA GPU, which is a GTX 680, and it's running at 16X native. Um, so this is just so you can see what's running. Maybe, again, maybe you're overclocking video cards and maybe one's not being recognized or something like that. You can see what's actually being recognized in the BIOS. Um, just, a, you know, just makes it so much easier. Same thing with your memory. If you have a memory issues, you can see where you have everything installed and all of that. We'll get out of there and we'll go to the DigiPlus power control. And this is all of your power control settings for your CPU and DRAM and VRM. So you can see all of that stuff right in here um, and go ahead and change it how you like. We'll go out of here and then Tweaker's Paradise, again, this is another ROG exclusive. This is to really get down and tweak all of these settings here. So there's a lot of stuff. If you're doing hardcore overclocking and things like that, you're gonna wanna go into here and you can really tweak everything out to how you like it. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. Get out of here, CPU power management. Of course, this is all of the different power settings for your CPU. So you can change all of this stuff um, and, and you know change everything around how you like it for the power settings, which are on your CPU. And then we go to our voltages. So again, in the Extreme Tweaker, you have all of your voltages down in here. So you can change all of these to how you want it. Just like we have our uh, core voltage set on manual mode. You can change it to auto, offset, or adaptive mode, and you can change all these values how you like. Um, pretty, pretty much easy to go through and do. So that's all everything that's in Extreme Tweaker. Now, your main menu here, again, is gonna show your BIOS information, your version, your version date, your IROG version, your ME version, Southbridge, Stepping, all that stuff, um, you know, basic information. You can also go in here and check out your security. You can set a user password as well as an administrator password if you want. Um, in advanced, you know, this is all the basic settings that are on your motherboard. So we're not gonna go into all of these because the, you know, you're gonna see these exact same settings on many different motherboards. We're gonna go into some things that are pretty cool and maybe a little bit different. Again, in here, this is where you change all of your CPU settings. So if you wanna disable, um, a lot of the Intel features, you can do that. So you can enable hyper-threading, active processor cores, all of that cool stuff. Um, 
hardware prefect, Intel virtualization technology, all of that stuff. And then CPU power management configuration, you can turn on and off the EIST turbo mode and C states. So maybe you don't want your CPU powering down for these the new C states. You don't have to uh, have that enabled here in the BIOS, which is something nice if you want your computer running you know, up all the time. Maybe you're downloading something or you just want your computer at full speed all the time. You don't have to have that. Um, if we get out of here and we'll go into the SATA configuration and what's cool about the SATA configuration is that you can rename these. Um, let's see if I can do that here. Uh, let's see how we actually rename this. Oh, here we go. So you just type. Um, so I can delete this and say this is um, SSD2 maybe. So I've renamed the hot plug SSD2, and that just makes it easy to rename. So all you do, again, you just click on this and bring it up, and you can just type in whatever you want. It just makes it easier. You know, maybe you don't know what drives what, or maybe one's a storage drive, one's an OS drive. You can kind of name the labels on, on these. It just makes it a lot easier. Something that's new, again, in this revision of the BIOS, which is really cool. Um, again, this is just all your basic SATA, SATA configuration. Um, on there. As far as everything else, it, there is not a lot of other features. There is your ROG effects. So you can turn your ROG pulse on or off, which I believe is just this right here. Let's go ahead and disable it and see what that does. Yeah, so that just uh, doesn't stop that. Or maybe we might have to save it. You might, that, I don't believe that you can, um, that it's auto. You think you have to save it, but we can leave that enabled. The onboard LEDs, those are actually, that's on the board in the Supreme FX lighting, of course, is the lighting that goes around that little section on your motherboard. So you can turn those on or off. Maybe you don't want it. Maybe you think it's annoying or something like that. You can turn them on or off if you like. We go back and again, we're not gonna go over all of this other stuff. We're gonna go into our monitor here. And here you can monitor all of your things. So you can see your voltages, everything just like that. Um, you know, again, if you're overclocking or you're just checking things out, you wanna see your voltages, you can see your temperatures, of course, our CPU and motherboard temperatures. We can see our fan speed monitor, see all of the fans. We have three fans connected, so you can see all of those. And we have our fan speed control. And again, you can set low limits. So say you turn your computer and your fan isn't running at all, you can set a low limit to the speed of the fan. So if it's not up to speed, your computer won't start. The BIOS will actually give an error before it loads into the OS. Um, it's a good thing to have in case sometimes, you know, your fan just blows out or something like that. And we have our boot settings over here. Again, you can turn on fast boot, um, direct key, hardware, hardware fast boot, all of that stuff. And of course you can um, set your boot options and everything like that and boot over right here. So if I just click one of these, it will boot right into that device. And then if we go over here, we have some tools here. So we have the Easy Flash 2 utility. What that does is it's gonna allow you to easily flash your BIOS um, via a USB flash drive. Very, very easy to do. One of the easiest ones that I've seen to flash a BIOS. We have our ROG SSD Secure Erase. I'm not sure if we can go into that. I guess we can. And what that does is it you can actually secure erase a hard drive. Now, a lot of hard drive manufacturers actually go ahead and give you a program to secure erase, but Asus wanted to give you this add-on just because a lot of people don't use those or you know maybe the SSD manufacturer doesn't have that program for free. You may have to pay for it. Here, you can go ahead and secure erase a solid state drive, bringing it back to that original very, very fast speed. Now, hopefully this brings us back into the BIOS. Let's see. Yes, it does. We have ASUS OC profile. So you can save different OC profiles. Maybe one is your CPU OC profile. Maybe one's a graphic card OC profile. Maybe it's a gaming OC profile. You can go ahead and load and save profiles from here very easily. Get out of this. We have our ASUS SPD information. Of course, this is all of the SPD information for your um, memory. And you can, there's different slots that you should be able to select. Yeah, so we can select the different slots and see what's installed and everything like that. And we have our, finally we have our ROG OC panel H key configure. And 
Now the H key and the OC panel aren't included in this motherboard. You can buy them separately if you want. And these are values that go into those. So if you want an instant overclock using those um, different accessories, you can go ahead and do that. Now, before we actually finish this video out, there's two cool things that we want that I want to show you. One, let's get out of here and we'll go back. Let's change some stuff real quick. So we'll go ahead and say, Let's cut back to a normal overclock, which would be 3.5 gigahertz. So we'll go ahead and do that. Change that to 3.5 and let's see. We changed the, we changed the uh, name of the plug on, or the, the SSD, we'll do that again. We'll change another one. So we'll go to advanced SATA configuration and, oh, we did name that one. We'll name this one um, first plug or something. Go ahead and name this one first plug just to change some stuff. And you'll see why I'm doing this. So we're going to go ahead and say we're done. Say we want to save, right? So we go here to exit and um, we'll go ahead. Actually, before we do that, we'll do one more thing. Sorry. We'll go ahead. Uh, get out of here. No. Go ahead and we'll show you this thing called Quick Note. And what Quick Note does is it allows you to take notes within the BIOS. So say you're overclocking. When I'm overclocking, I'm writing everything on notepads and I lose these notepads and I'm not sure what worked. You know, maybe I'm doing an overclock for a certain review and then I come back a week later and that notepad's gone or something like that. Quick Note, what it allows you to do is it allows you to take notes. So I can say this is a note, you know, oops. I can say this is a note or something, you know, you can type in there overclocked, did work, didn't work, things like that. You can hit uh, save and quit. And next time I go into quick note, you can see that it is saved there. So let's go and we hit exit. Um, we'll hit save changes and reset. And now what it does before it allows you to save, it shows you what you have done. So you can see that we changed our uh, core ratios to back to from 47 to 35 and we turned our turbo mode from enabled to disabled and then from you know enabled to disabled again. So you can see the different things that you've changed in the BIOS right here. Now we're not going to save here and what we can actually do is see our last modified changes as well. So we go in here and you can see this is when I did all of my overclocking and everything like that. This is the last time I actually saved the BIOS. You can see our last mo modified log and you can actually save that to a USB um, of course, which makes things pretty easy. Now, before we exit one more time, um, you can see all of your hotkeys over here as well. So F1, general help, F2, previous values, F3, shortcut, F4, of course, adds to your favorites. F5 is optimize defaults. F10 is save and exit. And F12 is print screen. Now, if you want to print screen, as you saw that I accidentally hit F12, what that will do is it will save it to a flash drive. So you need a flash drive installed to actually save a screenshot. But that's basically it. So we'll go ahead and save changes and reset. And again, it shows everything. You hit yes. And we're going to go ahead and reset. And I'll actually go back right back into the BIOS here. So you guys can see that, but it is a very fluid BIOS, doesn't slow down. It's like, again, one of the best ones out there. It has a lot of features that makes just using a BIOS so much easier because of course, many users aren't used to going into the BIOS and they want something to change really quickly. So that opening easy screen makes things so much easier for you. Um, as we can go in back into the easy mode to show you real quick again, just makes things so much easier for you. Um, Again, very, very easy to use. Now, if you have any questions about this BIOS, this BIOS is very similar to almost all of ASUS's Z87 motherboard BIOSes. Of course, this one has the ROG skin and many ROG features that are not on other motherboards. So you have to take that into consideration. But if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And remember guys, if you like our videos, why don't you subscribe?